So this is the MFT table that I purchased. Um, it's a Festool MFT3. And then I actually, if you look down at the base here, down here, I did cut the table down. And it's just assembled with uh, simple pocket screws. There's no glue in this build because, well, I didn't have glue in the build before. And that's why I was able to actually just disassemble it and cut it down and re uh, reassemble it and make it level with my MFT. Let's get a look at that again. Alright, so my work surface is measuring about 40, 142 and a half, and, uh, yeah, 140, 142 and a half inches. That's how long this work surface is. I have one more addition that I want to show you. Back this up a little bit so you can kind of get a full, full view. All right, so I'm gonna go all the way down on the end just to kind of give you scope. All right, so this is a total from here all the way up to here is 142 inches, but that's not all. So let's go ahead, let me show you what else I've been working on. So this is my newest addition to my workshop and it is my cabinet saw. So obviously it's not a real cabinet saw. Cabinet saw, it's, uh, it is the Milwaukee Fuel M18 table saw and that puts this whole work surface at just under 175 inches which is just under 14 or just it's over 14 feet long so let's take a closer look at the this um, as I told you before I I as I told you before I'm not the greatest woodworker I'm just practicing and learning myself but let's go over what I did here. So if you look down at the table saw, first and foremost, you see it's it's set on a base here, and then you have storage space underneath, and then over here, where I want to go and put like a say like a Milwaukee pack out vacuum so that I can plug it into this saw for dust collection. Now, if you notice the cutouts here, I have a cutout here, which this works actually as a nice little handle dragging the saw around. And I cut this section out here, and then I have the cut out here and there, and that gives me, let me pull this forward just a hair. I haven't secured the saw exactly where I want it yet, but when it's in position, I have full movement to the left and full movement. To the right of the blade um, I have about 24 inches to the right and to the left going over here it's about 32 inches so additions that I'm going to add additions that I'm going to add to this uh, cutting area I'm going to put an extension that folds up here so that I can get probably about I want to say 48 to maybe uh, probably like 50 something inches maybe even more because I'm actually going to have it go all the way down to the bottom down here and fold all the way out I'm also going to I'm going to put an extension back here that's going to fold up so that I don't actually have to use my my MFT as an outfeed so if my MFT is uh, busy with some form of assembly project I can still use my table saw and still have a nice little outfeed to work with so this is one of the things that I've been working on 
Um, so now I want to turn my attention to making a shop, a shop uh, miter saw station. So I'm going to change all of this around. I'm probably, I may move this, you know, maybe make it a little bit, uh, you know, cut it off at the bottom. And then back over here, this is all going to change. And I think the French cleat wall is going to come around this way. This is a temporary cart that I made just to uh, get these scraps that I had just laying around on the floor. And so I just kind of just just made this and just threw all this wood on it. It's, it's not an elegant solution, obviously. But I wasn't ready to throw all these scraps away because I'm going to use a lot of them to help me. Uh, get better at you know just working with my tools and, and such I actually I have a little a small Ryobi uh, bandsaw and I, I actually took uh, just a piece of two by four something like this it was probably smaller than this and I was simply trying to do an actual uh, what do you call it a rip cut or whatever trying to Oh, resaw. I was trying to resaw a two by four with that, and it basically snapped the blade off of the um, the saw. I know I have replacement blades somewhere around here, but I have to find them so that I can put that back on there. So I, I think that's a no on resawing with that particular saw. So as I said, uh, my my next project is going to be. Well, I think my very next project is going to be making a table saw sled. I've never made one of those, so I'm going to make a table saw sled. And then after I make that, I want to start working on uh, a miter saw station. Now, the miter saw station is going to go all along this wall over here. And um, as I said, all of this stuff on the bottom is going to move. And I'm going to do the same thing that I've done with my MFT. It's probably going to be about the same length when I when I make it so that I can uh, cut so that I can cut long pieces of wood you know like full length two by fours maybe um, like uh, two by tens two by eights but basically have the full either eight or even ten foot long laid up on here to cut and I want to put a T-track in the back, you know, a fence with a T-track where I can get those constant measurements. So my workflow is going to be, you know, like I bring, you know, obviously, you know, my, my MFT is on wheels. So when I bring wood and lumber to the house, I'll simply roll my MFT over to the garage, offload the material on to my MFT. I'll use the, I use um, the foam, like um, I guess it's like wall foam or whatever. It's probably about, I don't know, maybe a couple inches thick. And I lay that on the top of my MFT. And that's where I'll do my rough cuts um, to cut my, my uh, wood down to particular sizes. And then after that, when I want to become more precise, that's when I'll use, um, I'll pull out my, my, uh, bench dogs fence system and I'll start cutting on the MFT cutting the big pieces down into smaller pieces that are you know more in the dimension that I want and then for the even smaller pieces that's where this is gonna come in uh, <clears throat> I have to stop saying that but so along the back here so this is gonna change because I'm actually I'm actually going to, and I'm talking about the, the base to my table here. Right now I have things stored underneath. Let's take a look at that. All right. So right now, as you can see, I just have a few random items I kind of cleaned up, stored underneath my table. And it's just more like layout equipment. But this is going to change. And the reason being is... On this end here, this is the back, I guess, because I'm on the back side of the table right now. But the back uh, right corner or on this area, I'm going to actually get a dashboard set up, which is a similar hinge to this. And I'm going to put T-Track going all the way down here so that I can actually put the dashboard hinge here. And I think I'm going to get the one that's built for the DeWalt saw so that I can do uh, cuts like that. And I'm also considering maybe getting 
the one for the the Makita too. And if I do that, what I'll do is I'll I'll actually have two. So I'll have the rail, the T track going from one end to the other, and I'll have two separate stations. One station will be here with a fold up table like this or a fold up uh, rail hinge. And so I'll put one here and then I'll put one right about here. Now remember though, those uh, those rail hinges can actually slide anywhere up and down the table. And so the reason why I would actually have two of them is so that if I wanted to, I could actually have both set up on the table at the same time. So they would be folded up towards that way. And I would just kind of fold them down this way to make whatever cut that I wanted to make. And um, it's, it's that right there. I mean, it's a bit much, but in my mind, it would be kind of cool because I can have different stations set up for different things because I do find that this is a nice, precise cutting setup to get, you know, accurate, repeatable cuts so that, you know, if you're like cutting four legs to a table, they'll all be the exact same length. Now, as I said, when I put the miter station here, that, and it's going to be on wheels so that basically I can roll it wherever I need to roll it in the shop because, as I said before, I work on cars in this garage as well not other people's cars but just my own and since i work on cars here i have to be able to move all of this equipment around so that i can take care of whatever it is that i need to take care of at that time so i do i, I have quite a few uh projects i have quite a few projects that i'm actually that i have in my mind and as i've moved over to this new uh sony camera which is giving me better visual uh, fidelity, I guess you could call it. So I'm getting a better picture with this camera. Also, I'm getting way better battery life. So I'm actually considering getting a second camera just like this. However, just like with everything, it's sold out so that I can have work on like having, you know, kind of like two angles, but more so because I'm basically doing the work in the shop myself and I'm recording myself, I can have one on a wide angle so you can kind of see the environment and what I'm actually doing from a, a, a wider scale. And the other one, I'll have more of a longer lens on it so that it can zoom in to exactly what I'm doing at that time so that you can kind of get a picture and I can kind of toggle back between the different images as I'm learning how to edit video because obviously you can see just from the videos that I've done that I'm not very good at it but I do plan on getting better.